Okay, I got something new for us. Um, I ordered this. Um, if I can get into it, it's sent to me uh, for five dollars. We have two amplifier kits. These are the TDA 7297. There's two kits here. Um, these are um, Class AB amplifiers. They're a push-pull design. They're uh, 15 watt per channel, two channel. So it's stereo. And there is our amplifier IC. These were real popular for uh, putting in radios and televisions and stuff. Um, 15 watt per channel. At um, it recommends uh, on the kit was 12 volt, but uh, they'll they'll run off a minimum of, of around 7 volts, a uh, high 18 volts. Now, I'm pretty sure the 15 watt is going to be on uh, 4 ohm loads. I could be wrong about that. And this circuit board they they sent is with the minimum uh, components that you have to be able to operate this. Um, there is no way you can adjust the volume or anything. Um, let me get my eye loop on it and really study what's going on with this chip. Alright, before I get the eye loop out though, uh, let's look at the contents. Like I said, we have the the amplifier I see we have looks like two ceramic capacitors they are 224 so that is well let me noodle it out it's um 0.22 microfarads I think I have to double check on that I could be wrong I can't remember this crap all right, we have an electrolytic capacitor. It's a 50 volt, 10 microfarad. We have another electrolytic capacitor, which is a 25 volt, 100 microfarad. Two resistors. I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to um, check this with a multimeter. I'm colorblind, so those little bands they don't have, they have no use for me. And we have a diode here, which is a uh, oh, that's difficult for me to see. Looks like an RL two o seven. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that diode, but it looks like your standard diode. Uh, it's probably for um of polarity protection and then we have the circuit board here and it looks like everything's printed on the legend for us to, uh, it's clearly so we can put everything in the proper spot all right and let me get the loop on it and dissect this thing Okay, uh, one thing with this kit, it does not come with a heat sink. And you are going to need a heat sink to run these. They're going to build up uh, quite a bit of heat. They're dissipating at max uh, 15 watts per channel. Two channels, that's 30 watts. And I designed this heat sink and fabricated it a while back. And uh, I think I'm going to try using it on this. And hopefully I have enough surface area to dissipate the heat on it. But... I went over the board and it looked at the data sheet onto the circuit and this is what I came up with. Um, you have to remember that penmanship is not a quality or is not a characteristic that I have so bear with me on the the chicken scratch. I know it looks like a, a chicken that had a seizure that wrote this. Um, but this is our TDA 7297 and you have uh, 15 pins across here and it looks like on the chip they have your first two pins which are speaker outs. Um, pin 3 is going to be for your input which they recommend 12 volt 
And also pin 13 is going to be your uh, VCC power supply input, which is going to be 12 volt. And uh, they uh, looks like they do have that diode for uh, polarity protection. Uh, pin 4 is going to be channel 1 output. And they do have one of these capacitors, which is a filter capacitor. It's going to filter out your, um, your DC to your speaker. Uh, pin 5 is not being used. Let's see, I think that's right. Yeah, and pin six is your uh, mute pin, and um, the resi they had the resistors there. It's a 47k, which is uh, and also on the standby, which is um, a 47k, which they're using the. 10 microfarad um, electrolytic capacitor and what that's going to do is when you cut the um, cut the amplifier on it's going to stop that popping noise um, pin 8 right here is going to be ground for your uh, power supply and then uh, pin 9 is your signal ground your input signal ground pin 10 pin 11 are not being used uh, pin 12 is going to be your channel 2 output, and they got another filter uh, uh, filtered capacitor here. Let's say we already went over 13, which is going to be your uh, your power supply voltage. And then you have uh, 14 and 15, which are going to be your other channel speaker output. Okay, I, I forgot to mention, too, that you got the... The 100 microfarad uh, smoothing capacitor out here um, for the power supply. Um, this is actually a little too small. You probably need to put a larger capacitor in this. Um, I'm going to build one of these kits exactly how they have it with all the components and how they've designed it. We'll, we'll build it up and test it. And then um, the second kit, I'm probably going to put the proper... Uh, capacitor here I think the filter capacitors are right here are going to be fine um, the capacitor for the um, the mutant standby from reading the data sheet that looks like that's going to be fine too um, and then what I'll probably do is um, um, add a logarithmic um, potentiometer in it so we can control the volume on the second one and I'll test it out all right, this board right here is a really cheap board. Um, if you do solder the components in the wrong spot, um, beware if you go to desolder because you could lift those pads really easy. So, you know, take precaution with that. Okay, I got it all soldered up and all the wires put in and drilled my hole for this and uh, I'm going to apply some of this cheap uh, thermal paste to it and we're going to put it together and we'll test it out all right uh, one thing about this thermal paste here of course it says it's thermal grease this stuff is cheap um, it is fine to use on these little ICs right here do not use this stuff uh, on uh, computer processors or even a uh, like game console uh, processors if you're going to do a game console repair especially a PlayStation 4 you take it apart you have to apply the um, the thermal grease or thermal paste onto it don't use this stuff use the proper stuff this is not going to cut it okay I got everything hooked up got the heat sink on uh, tried it out with my other power supply, the new one, the new one I just created, um, and I was getting a lot of frequency interference with it. I have to figure out what's going on with that. So I'm having to use my old power supply with it, um, but it actually there it sounds really smooth with it. I'm going to cut it on. You're going to hear the fan running, and then I'm going to play some music, and uh, you can hear it for yourself. Um, I'm playing this through some uh, some cheap uh, Sony uh, SSG 2000 speakers. So here we go. I know you can't really.
really tell with the, um, with the camera and audio, but it sounds really good in here. Yeah, it sounds real good, so. All right, let's put it on the oscilloscope and uh, see what we get out of this guy. Okay, sorry about the background noise. That is from uh, Voltage Supply. Um, I'm going to go on a huge rant here. I went and I was getting ready to test it on my oscilloscope and I started having problems. Now listen to this. <laughs> All that happened just out of nowhere so the first thing I was thinking surely there was a ground problem or there was an old over voltage problem so I started testing the board out testing everything I knew uh, to test and I was getting ready to desolder parts and everything and um, I was getting to, to think that the IC was bad but this is where cheap Chinese parts get you the last thing I thought to check on this was the thing that actually the circuit board did not need and that is this diode right here. Now check this out. A little cheap Chinese diode caused all that. And the circuit doesn't need it. And that that's the part that just confuses me out of all of it. Okay, I shot a whole video with me hooking it up to the oscilloscope and everything and uh, clipping on it. Um, but I was pissed off. Evidently, I didn't hit the, um, the play button on my camera. But this is what I come up with. I had... Um, 9.8 volts not uh, and then so um, this is RMS uh, so you times that 9.8 volts and divide it by um, 8 ohms which was the load I put on it and I came up with 12.005 watts so that's what I was getting output of it um Overall, I guess it's all right. It sounds good. I mean, it actually it's decent. Other than the, the crappy Chinese diode I got for it, which I just put these jumpers across that I'll have to go in and uh, fix that. I'm probably just going to put a jumper wire on it. Um, yeah, overall, for I got two of these delivered to me for, uh, I guess, I think it was under five bucks. Um, the next one I'll go in, I'm going to put a, a different uh, capacitors in it, and I'm going to put a, a logarithm a potentiometer in it, and that way I can uh, control the volume and everything. But yeah, I guess overall it's not bad. I'm, I'm kind of pleased with it. All right, would I recommend this? For the price, yes. It's easy to put together. It has minimum parts. The sound quality is incredible. I was very impressed with it. Um, it has cheap Chinese parts. Um, this diode failed on me. I would change the capacitors in it. And I will. And I'll, I'll probably going to uh, re-engineer this and... Um, make another video about it but it's definitely worth the money for what I paid for it I would recommend it you know it, it's not bad it really isn't so yeah I would recommend buying this so if you like this video give me the thumbs up uh, like and subscribe uh, if you have any comments leave a comment below uh, especially if you know anything more about this you can teach me leave a comment below um, it's all about learning you guys have a good day.